Today, we're going to cover unit testing. I've been dragging this on because unit testing is such a big and complex topic. But today, we're going to start with the very basics. We're going to do some very basic unit testing, some mocking, and some grouping. This is the app we're going to test. It's very similar. Hopefully, you saw it in the last video, but it's, it's simplified. We can add a to-do from here. We can call from database. The database isn't an actual database, it's just a static function that we're gonna mock. So let's get into it. So before we go into the testing, I wanted to go through the actual app that we're testing. So it's very similar to the to-do app we built with GetX and Firebase, except two major changes. We're not using GetX or Firebase. I'm doing this because one, mocking Firebase is a pretty big subject and we're going to go over that later. And two, I want to show you how GetX makes this simpler in another video. So we're going to do this with just basic Flutter and we're going to cover very basic unit tests. So the main is just going to lead to the home. Then the home we have this text form field and we have a little plus icon and a load from database button and then a list of your to-dos. So these are all controlled in the list controller. So this list control is the actual list of to-dos that we're going to have. We're going to have four functions. We're going to be able to add, checkbox select, clear, and then load from database. One big thing unit test forces you to do is separate all the responsibilities and make your architecture for the code very clean. So that's why we're passing the database in here. The list controller isn't in charge of the database. It's only in charge of the list. So our actual to-do model is very simple. We just have the content and whether it's done or not. Then you'll realize in our list controller, the last function is load from database. So you can pretend this is loading from Firebase, but for us, we're just gonna have a future that's delayed by three seconds. And I'm gonna return that model with the content of, from database and it will start off with done. So we can click that, we'll see from database and it's already done. Then we could add as well. And then it gets added there. So these are the four main functions we're gonna test. Whether it adds it to the to-do list, whether checking a checkbox works, whether clearing their list works, and loading it from database. But we're gonna mock this database instead of using our actual one. So let's finally get to the tests. And your unit test needs its own main. And then the way you define a test is you just write test. And the first part is the description. So we'll do initializes with empty and then the body is a function that you run so here let's make sure that the list gets initialized to be an empty list which is a very simple unit test i don't even know if you need it but we create a list controller and we won't pass the database in yet and then the way you test it is you do expect and you have an actual and a matcher so your actual is what the actual thing you're testing outputs. And then the matcher is what it should output. So we can do list controller dot to do list dot length. And the matcher, it should be zero. So now you can save that. So you can run them from the terminal or you can run them from inside VS code. You just click run. You know, run your tests and you'll see you have both check marks there. You can run each specific test as well. But I actually like to do it from the terminal just because it seems more badass. But <laughs> And there we see all tests passed. So let's add a test that's a little bit more complex than this. Now the description will be to do added. So we create a list controller again. And then let's do list controller dot add to do and then our to do is going to be get groceries and we're going to initialize it with false so now our length should be one and we can run that just to make sure yes everything passes and if you see if we change this to zero that means we're expecting zero and we run it again our test will actually fail and it'll tell us the expected was zero, but the actual we got was one. So set that back to one. And then we can have multiple expects in here. So we can check to do list at index zero. The content should be get groceries. And then we can run that test. 
and they all passed. So what else you could do, but I don't really do it much. You could have a group. So same thing. Let's say this is for the to do controller and the body looks exactly the same. You just copy paste the tests in there. And now you can run a specific group instead of all the tests within the main. So you'll see both tests pass within the two controller now. I just like to separate it by files. I had to have a similar setup as my lib folder in the test folder. So you can separate it out by files, but if you want to do groups, you could do that. One very useful thing is there's this thing called a setup and a teardown. So these run before every single test. So in your setup, you can have a function and you see we create a new controller in every single test. So what we could do instead is just create a global controller and before every test runs, we can initialize it. So now we don't need this line and we don't need this line either. In the teardown, we don't really have anything we could do here, but we could do a list controller dot clear. If you want to do something at the end of every test, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to reinitialize it here anyways, before the next test. So this is optional for this scenario. Now you see your test got even more concise, easier to read. Very simple. So let's add one more basic test and then move on to the mocks. This one will be checkbox selected. Copy this, paste it here. And we can check how our checkbox selected should work. We need to pass in a new value and an index and it should update. So here we have get groceries, false, and list controller, checkbox selected, new value will be true, and index zero. We don't really care about the length. We can check the done variable. Here it should be true. And we can actually check it beforehand as well to check that it is false. All three tests pass. Okay, great. So now the last part is mocks. Mocking, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things when it comes to unit testing because that's what controls your architecture the most. And mocking those API calls to Firebase or whatever is, is difficult to architect, I'll say. So in order for mocks to work, we need to first add a dependency. The dependency is called Mokito. Yeah, there's a C. If you want a better understanding of this, there's a pretty good introduction to unit testing and then mock dependencies with Mokito as well. So make sure to look read through these if you're if you're new to testing. But once we have the Mokito installed, we'll be able to mock this database function. So the way you create a mock of a interface like this database is you create a class called, let's say, mock database, extends mock, which is provided by Mokito, and it implements your database function. So now you have a mock database. Remember, we want to pass this mock database into our list controller. So create an instance of mock database, and we can pass it to this database in the list controller and now it will use this mock database. So we currently have a list controller with a mock database passed to it. How do we use this mock database? So we'll call this test mock database call and it will need to be asynchronous since we are doing it with futures. And then this is the key part right here. You want to do when 
when that mock database object calls load database, then we want to answer with a future dot value of to do model from mock and true. So let's let's go through that one more time. So when this load database function gets called on the mock object, then we want to answer with a future value of to do from mock. So the reason we want it to be a future value is because you'll see this returns a future value of it. So the mocking part is done. Now we just need to await the list controller dot load from database. And we can expect the list controller to do list at position zero since we created a new list controller here. The content to be from mock. All right, so hopefully this all worked. Let's run it all. And there we go, all our test pass with flying colors. So that's it, that's the very basics of unit testing and mocking. Unit tests are very powerful. They'll save you lots of time in the future. It'll give you more confidence in your code and will help organize your architecture in a more scalable way. There's gonna be more unit testing coming with Firebase Authentication, Firestore, and GetX, so make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that. But that's it for this video. This code will be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and thanks for watching.